From Reminder Media, this is Stay Paid, a sales and marketing podcast on a mission to help you close more deals and retain more business. Hosted by the VP of Marketing, Josh Steik, and Reminder Media's president, Luke Akery. So get ready to hear the golden nuggets that will allow you to live a life of freedom tomorrow, but only if you take action today. All right, here we go. Three, two, one. Do we we got to include that part, right? <laughs> that part has to stick. We are doing another silver dollar episode. Jesse uh, told us she's uh, she's running the cameras today. Yes. She said that we have to do more of these at eleven o'clock yeah. in the morning. Josh's Apparently, our energy, energy is on point. Is high in the morning. I love it. Before all the problems and the weight of the day. <laughs> Just tear you down by the afternoon. I literally was saying to Jesse, it's just like you get one problem, you're like, no problem, I got this, and then another one, then another one, then and then eventually, you just, screw it. You get it. 90% We're just going to be bad done. today. <laughs> yeah, you get it ninety percent done, and then another one pops in, and nothing ever ends up getting done. It's like but, Facebook comments. It's like responding to Facebook comments. It's like you respond, and you're like, oh, another one. <laughs> Chasing rabbits. But hey, actually, that relates a lot to what we're going to talk about today because we're going to talk about reverse engineering your goals. So whether you want to do 100 transactions this year or maybe you want to earn $1 million in commissions. I don't know. Yes. Maybe that's Hopefully it's the $1 million, you know, because the number of transactions don't matter. It's how much money you take home. Love that. It doesn't matter what your goal is as long as you have a plan to hit. French writer Antoine de Saint-Esprit. What do you think of that, French? I'm impressed with your Antoine de (laughs) Saint-Esprit. Famously wrote, I should have just said, yeah, you should have just there was a French writer. <laughs> he said, a goal without a plan is just a wish. And the best plan for hitting a goal is the process of reverse engineering. At its core, reverse engineering your goals is about tracking and recognizing the smallest actions that you have to do every single day to achieve your goals. And today we're going to dive into why you should reverse engineer your mm-hmm. goals, how to reverse engineer them, and ultimately what to do when you hit your goal. Yes, yeah, so celebrate. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, but it, literally, like, when you think about the biggest issue in most businesses, like 90% of financial advisors fail in two years, 87% of real estate agents fail in five. I don't even know the number of restaurants, but I know it's crazy mm-hmm. how many fail. You you realize that <clears throat> most of the time they fail because they don't have a consistent plan in place that directs them every single day. And so they wake up every day and they're literally chasing the whim. They're, they're, you know how I just said, you know, laughed, oh, I'm responding to this Facebook comment and I'm chasing this fire. That's how most of their day is directed. If your day is directed that way right now, that's why you're losing. Because you need to have a plan in place. It doesn't mean you're not going to have fires pop up, but you need to have a plan in place to how you attack that. How do you get that plan? Well, you have to have, you have to start with your goal. Yeah. You have to go, this is what I want to make this year. Where do the deals come from that will get me to that level? Yeah, I just read the book Atomic Habits mm-hmm. uh, by James Clear, who I tried to get on the podcast. Yeah, we're still he's, trying. He's so. busy right now. But hey, it says, he says winners and losers have the same goals, which I absolutely it's love. so that powerful. Quote. And it's the winners that ultimately are the ones that implement and follow the systems and develop the habits every single day that lead them towards the goal. What really kind of broke this open for me a few years ago in our own business is I read uh, the conversion code by Chris Smith. So Chris mm. Smith is the yep. CEO or the founder of yeah, Curator. Curator. Yep. Um, and so he wrote this book called The Conversion Code. He used to sell for Rocket Mortgage. I think he was their top salesperson yeah. mm-hmm. selling on the phone for Rocket Mortgage. And this wasn't anything groundbreaking, but what it made me realize is that we can actually track every single conversion point from a stranger, someone being a stranger, just checking us out and showing interest in us, to ultimately becoming a client. And once we realized that, we could reverse engineer from our it's sales just goals. A math problem. So we pick our revenue goal. How many sales do you need to hit that revenue? Now it's how many leads do you need to get that sale? And we're going to walk you through here in this podcast from a real estate perspective, Mm -hmm. actually what the math looks like and breaks down as you reverse engineer those. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy to think that all it takes to really be successful is to do the actions all day long that produce the results you want. And so you got to just know, okay, so if you think about it from a real estate perspective, well, what's the actual income that I want? Yep. And not just obviously the GCI, not just your commissions. What's the net profit you want? That's really what I challenge people to get mm. to. Remax, I think, calls it their entrepreneur mantra. I will not make less than blank this year. That's their entrepreneur mantra they want every agent to do. That is what I will not go home. I will not sleep. I will not stop, you know, pushing till I actually hit this goal. So if you want to make, you know, a certain amount of money, then you put in your expenses and then you have your net income that you're coming in. And then you have to ask yourself the basic question, which is where does that 
income come from? Where does those commissions come from? Where are you going to get those deals? For me, there's like eight to nine different lead generation strategies within real estate mm. that you can that you can actually do. So you need to pick. I've heard it you know, said multiple times and you know, I don't know if the, the magic number's four, but four pillars of lead sources that you will commit to. So maybe that's FISBO sphere and maybe you do um, your farm and you do open houses and you're committed to those four, but you have to figure out at this point, well, how many FISBOs do I have to call in order to get an appointment? Mm -hmm. And out of how many appointments do I get, do I actually turn those appointments into listings? Yep. And out of how many listings do I actually get (laughs) Do I turn those listings into Into actual sales? (laughs) Yes. And then all of a sudden you have the math. Yep. And then now you know for every 50 FISBOs I work or every 50 conversations I have, I get one transaction. Yeah. So we're going to walk you through that. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you have to build a tracker. So more than likely, this is going to be some sort of a spreadsheet. Then the next thing you want to do is revert those conversion points. So the conversion points that Luke just pointed out there, you want to go through and recognize every single one. The conversion points are actions where someone can make a choice and essentially choose a path. So if you think about a flow chart and you're working through and you go to the next step in the flow chart, there's usually a yes or no. Either they move forward or they didn't. And those are your conversion points. Then you want to plug all of your numbers in uh, and look at your results historically. Mm-hmm. So go back and look at your results, results historically. If you have not been tracking them, track them for like 30 to 90 days. And a lot of times you might even have to track them longer, especially in something like a real estate sale, yep. because it's going to take longer for yep. that to completely play out so that you get a an, an, uh, solid amount of data. Yes. I would start tracking them now and track them forever. But if you're looking for something to get started now, go like 30, 60 days tracking these things, then enter in your end goal. And that's going to reverse calculate each value based on the preceding conversion rates. We're going to walk through that. Exactly what Luke was talking about there. We're going to start with the number 100,000 in GCI. I'm just going to pick that number. Everybody wants to make easy math. (laughs) Let's say the average commission is 3%. Your average listing price, uh, sale price is $200,000. That's Mm $6,000 per sale. You need 17 homes sold in a year to hit 100,000 in GCI. Now look right before that. What's your conversion rate of listing taken to listing sold? This is from the millionaire real estate agent. They say 65%. So they're saying okay. 65% of listings taken should convert to listing sold. That's 26 listings taken or 1.5 listings taken per month. What comes right before the listing taken? That is your listing appointment. So 80%, this is from millionaire real estate agent again, 80% of listing appointments convert to listings taken. So now you need 32 listing appointments this year or three a month. That's your most actionable goal is to get three listing appointments this month. Now, where are those coming from? Where are those listing appointment leads coming from? This is what Luke was talking about with the pillars. So you're going to split off and each one of these pillars is going to have different sort of conversion rates throughout the process. I did Facebook leads. So I'm going, this is probably high, but conversion rate of a website lead is 5%. So 5% of the people that fill out a form or request information from me, I'm going to get a listing appointment with. Mm -hmm. That's what I went with. That's 641 website leads or 53 website leads per month. If we're using uh, Facebook to get those leads, um, we would have to uh, have a Facebook ad driving traffic. Before that, the website conversion rate would be 20%. So that means I need 3,205 page visits or 267 page visits per month. We're going to put all of this math in the show notes. And then if we're using Facebook to drive that traffic, I look at my click-through rate. That's the conversion point. Someone has to see it, and then what's the path they can take? They can either click on it or they cannot. This is based off of our own numbers, which is 3%. So I need 106,000 people to see my ad, (laughs) right? To get 3,200 page visits, to get 641 website leads, to get 32 listing appointments, and uh, 26 listings taken and 17 homes sold. Which will get me my hundred thousand. When you GCI. when you literally say it like that, though, like I mean, uh, people right now are probably listening in their car going, "Wait, wait, wait, back, back up." What'd you say? But when you when you spell it out like that, you realize, wow, it's not that difficult. It's not that difficult, it's, and it's not that expensive. How much? Look at yeah, it this way. That's what I was going to ask. If it's two you. and a half cents, again, this is based off some of our own numbers. Two and a half cents per impression. Now, yours might be higher if you're running locally because you're not going to have sure. as wide of an audience, and it's going to cost you a little bit more to get a little bit more targeted. Um, but that's two and a half cents times one hundred and six thousand impressions is twenty six hundred. 
everybody's like, now they throw it out the window. I don't believe this crap. Now, you if you look at any listings, look at our own product, and we have yeah. um, we're actually going to offer up a free spreadsheet that has all of this math for you. Yes. So everything I just explained, you don't have to think about. We're giving yeah. it to you for free. Um, but look at our product, American Lifestyle Magazine, the fifty eight percent referral rate, mm -hmm. right? So if you're sending to fifty people over the course of a year, how many people is that that are going to refer you? Twenty five, twenty something, twenty eight like referrals. Yes. From that, we just got new numbers, so we don't have. I was going to say twenty-seven. We just got new numbers, GFK results, so we don't have the math memorized yet. But if twenty percent of those referrals end up converting to clients for you, and what's the cost of it to send the magazine out? It's twelve hundred bucks a year. Yeah, it's nothing. Yeah, one one deal pays for this thing for years and years and years and years is what I tell people. Yeah. Uh, but here's the thing: what's so good about the math, right? Is you're going through and you're going, okay, my Facebook ad budget, I'm going to at least have to spend twenty six hundred bucks, right? At, at your you know impression cost, which it's probably going to be higher yeah. for local for the local market or whatever. But uh, you go down and you realize that what are the points that I could screw this up? Well, one point is your ability to close the listing appointment. Yes. The other point is your ability to close, you know, at the listing presentation. So it's like then you realize now we're using the these averages that the millionaire real estate gave, which yeah. was what sixty five percent sell uh, yeah. when you get the listing. Sixty five percent sell, eighty uh, percent appointments to listings taken. Okay. Yeah. So at, you're supposed to close eighty percent of your listing of appointments. Time. Yeah. That seems really high. Yeah. Wow, there's some killers out there in real estate. If that's the millionaire, well, it, it was based off of millionaires. So. Yeah, yeah. So that's probably yeah. But that I mean, but but hence, but now you know one that's achievable. The two is that right. now you know where to focus. So where should you immediately go? Well, okay, if I'm not getting that, where are the scripts I can go to? What are the techniques I can do in order to improve yeah. that? You have some metric that it's you the same can do. thing we look at as marketers from the digital side, right? Yep. The landing page. If my landing, if I need twenty percent of people coming to my landing page to fill out that form, and I'm not getting twenty percent, I have to make my landing page better. Yes. Or I have to change my math to know that I'm going to have to spend that much more up front Bingo. to get less people yep. throughout the funnel. Um, my brother uh, Stephen calls, or he has an ISA called absentee owners, hmm. um, and the rate of closing is not great. So he actually tweaked because what he found out was it was taking him calling a thousand absentee leads to just get one transaction oh, and it's not that even from a cost standpoint this is what people don't understand about you know in real estate because like it, he still made money doing that but yeah. it, there's so many more effective ways yeah so that's when he switched and, and they still call some absentee owners but it's like you want to track how many conversations in farming what we see for real estate if you're farming is it what the millionaire real estate agent would say for every 50 homes that you farm for 12 months, you should get one transaction, I believe is what they say. It is over the, yeah, over the course of a year. Over the course yeah. of a year. So, yeah. you know, now you know, now you have some basic math of what you can expect from your farm. But here's where it all breaks down in two places, I believe. One is it breaks down because you don't stay consistent in it. Most people go, I tried farming, it didn't work. Well, you only tried it one time. You right. didn't even try it for a year, right. right? And then, or an open house. I tried an open house, it didn't work. Well, you got to do 60 open houses before you're going to get I ran one stay, Facebook ad, right. it didn't work. Yeah. You got to stay consistent in things. That, that's where a big part of these people fall down. But the second, and we had a great interview with a guy, Ravi, is they fall down on the literal conversation that you're having mm. and turning that into an actual qualified lead because you don't continue to follow up with the stuff that you get. So when you actually run these oh, Facebook yeah. ads and you actually get the leads in, you don't actually consistently follow up to get that appointment setting rate. One of the things I wish we'd looked for, and maybe we can find it after this, is what's the average conversion to a listing appointment? versus the, like the conversion at a listing appointment is 80%. Yeah. But I, I'd be curious to know what's the average Well, I put there. down 5%. Now, this yeah. was based off of website leads. And we all know website leads are going to be a lot lower than yeah. maybe like a, uh, some that you've prospected on the phone sure. or something like that. But yeah, I put down 5%. So it's just the like where it falls down, where if you're thinking right now, well, it's too simple. Why isn't it working that way for me? It's probably because you're not putting in enough follow up to your leads. Mm -hmm. Just just being honest, like when I look at everybody's marketing plans and I look at what their sales strategies are, the main falling down point is they actually don't contact their leads. enough. Exactly. This is just the system, yep. right? This, these are the fundamentals. This is how to uh, this is your stance. If you're swinging in baseball, mm -hmm. this is how your your um, your your throw. If you're throwing in another sport <laughs> yeah. that you throw <laughs> in. This is not the talent, right? This is the fundamentals. The talent and the craft comes in at mm -hmm. those individual points where people do have a, a chance to take But this should point you to where you need to focus. Yes. So we're going to actually give you that calculator for free if you head on over to ReminderMedia.com slash calculator. It's an Excel file 
all of the red cells in the Excel file is where you're going to put your conversion points in and then you change the end goal and it goes back and it does all the math for you. And I think there's four or five different tabs in there. One's for Facebook, mm -hmm. one's for postcards. And we use some, again, we use some uh, conversion points yeah, some from the millionaire real estate agent, but also, stuff. yeah, a typical direct mail response. I think it's 4.5% 4, 4 mm -hmm. direct mail response. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's, um, I think there's even our magazine. I have like a tab for our magazine nice. to get the referral rates and everything in there. So that's all set up for you. Remindermedia.com com slash calculator and then the last thing to do is what do you do when you hit your goal buy a steak dinner buy a steak dinner and then set a higher goal people yes. that's it that's that as simple as it is wins what happens when you win the championship you get back to the gym yeah and you win the next championship yeah. you know what's uh, ed Milet? um what drives him in his life is always chasing the better version of himself mm -hmm. and i love that i love that it's like every day you're chasing the better version of yourself once you hit that goal set the next goal set that vision but reward yourself along the way Reward yourself along the way. Yeah, you got to steak dinner, rewards. like vision boards. If you're familiar with vision boards, you need to set a vision. We are VP of um, basically corporate sales for us here. He has vision boards that he sets yeah. and he'll buy himself a steak dinner or he'll buy a new car or whatever it is, because that's his way of going. Yeah, I accomplished that goal. And then I'm, yeah. I'm doing this. All right. Well, thank you so much for listening. You can go to staypaidpodcast.com for the show notes, the video, and the links that we mentioned. If you're looking for ways to support the show, we really appreciate it. The first way is to rate us five stars on iTunes and to leave a comment. I don't have a featured comment for this one, but I do have another joke. You ready? <laughs> Josh's famous dad joke. Why do cows have hooves instead of feet? Because they, I don't know. Because they lack toes. Oh, I got Ariel on that one. She hadn't heard that one yet. Nice. You got to share the behind the scenes footage. The, <laughs> of that. the absolute best way to help out the show is to share it with a friend. Share on your social media. Our goal for Stay Paid is to reach number one on the Apple podcast charts in marketing. We really appreciate we your support. We need you. And helping us get there. Absolutely. Yes. Follow Luke on Instagram. He, yes, he, at Luke Acre. Yeah, he posts about. Yep. Or Facebook, Luke Acre RM. You can see Facebook. like daily updates on where yep. we're at in the iTunes chart. Crazy stuff. If you want to get a hold of me or Luke, you can email us at podcast at remindermedia.com. You can also find us on Instagram. We are at Stay Paid Podcast on both Instagram and on Facebook. For this episode of Stay Paid, I'm Joshua Stike. Guys, and I'm Luke Acree. Here's your action item. You know, in Shark Tank, if you guys watch Shark Tank, they always just go at them and say, you got to know your numbers. That's the action item. You got to know your numbers. What are the lead generation strategies that you're using today? And do you know your numbers? Do you know every conversion point and what it actually takes? What is the mathematical system if you're prospecting through Facebook or you're cold calling, Fizbo's, whatever you're doing, what are the numbers for your conversion? And then that will point you to what you need to improve or whether you need to dump more money on that fire, pour gasoline on it to blow it up. The difference between a top producer and a mediocre producer in every single industry we've worked in is top producers take action and track their numbers. Take action on that today.